Okay, in today's video, in 10 minutes or less, we are going to figure out the charge, the capacitance, and the voltages for a combination circuit that contains two capacitors that are in parallel with each other, and those two are in series with a third capacitor. This is the circuit that we're going to use. We have a nine volt battery, we have two capacitors in parallel, a three and a four microfarad, and those two are in series with this third five microfarad capacitor. Now, we are going to do the following things. One, what is the total voltage gain? What is the total capacitance? What is the total charge stored in the circuit? What is the potential difference for each capacitor? And what is the charge stored on each capacitor? Now, these first three, the total, the total, the total, those are the three totals. Then these will do for the individual capacitors. Okay, so we're going to do the first three first, of course, and then we'll work on the individual ones. Now, this is pretty obvious. The total charge, excuse me, the total voltage gain in this circuit is 9 volts. So just want to specify that. Make sure everybody understands that what we're talking about, the voltage is 9 volts. Now, the total capacitance, now this should say total, not total. But the total capacitance, we have to work on all three of these. We notice we have two in parallel. Okay, when we have capacitors in parallel, we can just add up their capacitances to get their total capacitance. So we have the capacitance of one and two is C1 plus C2, which is three plus four. And if I remember correctly, three plus four is seven. So the total capacitance of one and two, or the equivalent capacitance of one and two is seven. Now I'm just gonna kind of draw in my total capacitor there or my equivalent capacitor and just specify that it's seven just so I keep it in mind that I'm talking about that one is now seven and I'm not getting rid of the other two but I just want to remind myself that now I have one capacitor so to speak and that's in series with this other capacitor when we do capacitors in series we have to use the one over equation so one over one two three okay because now we're going to get the total for all of them one two three is equal to 1 over the capacitance of 1 and 2, which we just figured out was 7, plus 1 over 3, which we have here is 5. That means that that's 1 over 7 plus 1 over 5. Now, in my calculator, I'm just going to do 1 divided by 7 plus 1 divided by 5, and I get that 1 over 2 point, 1 over the total capacitance, or 1 over the capacitance of all 3 is equal to 0.0343. It is important to remember that this number is not the total capacitance. It's one over the total. So now I have to take the reciprocal of this side and the reciprocal of this side, and I get that the total capacitance or the capacitance of one, two, and three together is equal to one over 0 0.34 and three. I just took the reciprocal of this side, flipped it up. I took the reciprocal of this side, flipped it up, and I get this. And then I just do one divided by 0 0.343. And I get that the total capacitance of that circuit is 2.92 microfarads. Okay, a two-step process. First, do the two in parallel, then take that third one and put it in series with the two you just did in parallel. Okay, now we can get the total charge. Now, for the total charge, we're going to use Q equals C times V. That's our capacitor equation. We want to get the total charge. This is Q is the charge capacitance and voltage. So we're going to use the totals. We want to get the total. We got to use the totals. The total charge is equal to the total capacitance, 2.92, times the total voltage, which we said was 9 volts. The total charge is 26.28 microcoulombs, coulombs being the unit for charge. Okay? So we have the total voltage. That was easy. We calculated the total capacitance. That took a little work. And then we did the total charge. That was relatively straightforward. Okay, remember the rules and things for capacitors. All right, now we can go on and we can get the potential difference across each capacitor. Now we know that our equation we're going to use is Q equals C times V. Charge equals capacitance times the voltage. That's our capacitor equation. We can't use V equals I times R. Okay, so we're going to get the voltage across number three first because we know the voltage across number three is the charge on number three divided by the capacitance of number three well we know the capacitance of number three is five 
And you have to remember now, this is a little thing you have to remember, the charge on three is equal to the total. When we hook this capacitor up and close the switch, the negatives, the electrons, the charge moves to one plate. Well, an equivalent amount moves off and then it's split between these two. But you have to remember that when you have capacitors in series, and this one is in series with these two, that the charge on each of the capacitors when you have capacitors in series is the same. So the charge on this one is 26.28 microcoulombs. The, char the combined charge on these two okay, is also 26.28, okay? Because th this is in series with this. And the charge on capacitors in series is always the same as the total or the same as each other, okay? So you gotta keep that in mind. That's an important point you have to remember. So this is gonna be 26.28 microcoulombs divided by the micro five microfarads and you get that the, char the voltage across number three is 5.26. Now, if this one is 5.26, these two are in parallel. We know that the charge on, excuse me, the voltage on or the voltage across parallel capacitors or parallel elements in a circuit is the same. The voltage drop the voltage, the potential difference across parallel elements is going to be the same. So the voltage drop across this one and the voltage drop across this one is going to be the same. So that means that the voltage across number one is equal to the voltage across number two. Well, we use 5.26 volts here. That means the other part of the voltage, the other part of the nine must be used on those other two. So we know that that is going to be equal to the total, which is nine minus the three, which we calculated as 5.26. Okay, following me, that means nine minus 5.26 is equal to 3.75. Okay, now that's the simple, maybe the simple way to do it. You could also calculate it using Q equals C times V. Now the voltage on one, two, we know is the same because they're parallel. Parallel elements have the same voltage drops. We can use, if we're gonna get the voltage on one, two, we can get the charge on one, two, okay, which we know is 26.28. The charge on the combined charge on these two is 26.28 and the combined capacitance is seven. So that means that 26.28 divided by seven is also equal to 3.75 or 3.74. These two numbers are the same. So we kind of did it twice, we checked it. We got the same answer twice. So we're pretty confident that that's the same answer. And also 5.26 volts here, 3.74, Five and three is eight, a quarter and three quarters is nine, and that's equal to the total, and it should equal to the total because we have one voltage drop here. We have an equivalent voltage drop, or we have one voltage drop over here. One voltage drop, 5.26, the other voltage drop, 3.74 or 3.75, okay? So that's a little tricky. You gotta keep some of the um, rules in mind. Okay, last but not least, what is the charge stored on each capacitor? Okay, the charge on three. We can use our capacitor equation Q equals C times V because now we know that the capacitance, well, we know the capacitance of three is five and we calculated that the voltage, okay, I put it up here, is 5.26. So if you just multiply those two together, you get 26.3, which is basically the same thing as 26.28. Also, we know, as we said earlier, that the charge on three is equal to the total charge using our rule for capacitors in parallel. The charge on this one is 26.28. The combined charge on these two is also 26.28. So we can just say again that that's 26.28 and that makes sense because those two numbers are the same. Okay, the last thing, we're going to calculate the charge on each of the other two. The charge on number one is equal to the capacitance of one times the voltage on one. Now we know the voltage on one and two is the same, 3.74. So we know that this is gonna be the capacitance is three times 3.75, same thing. And that's 11.25. The capacitance on the charge on number two is its capacitance times its voltage drop. When we know the voltage drop across one and the voltage drop across number two is the same, four times 3.75 and we get 15.00, okay? That means that 
of the 26, 11, of the 26.3, 11.25 is on this capacitor and 15.00 microcoulombs is on the other capacitor. And you'll notice if we add these two up, 26.25, it's basically the same number as 26.28. So once again, we've checked everything a couple times to make sure, and we did a couple different, calculated it a couple different ways, and the numbers all add up. So that makes us uh, pretty confident that we have the right answer. Okay, so that's all five things. The total voltage, the total charge, the total capacitance, then the voltage drop, the potential difference across each capacitor, and the charge stored on each capacitor. Okay, now I know that was a lot, but you gotta write everything down, keep your units, keep your numbers, make sure you're using the right voltages and the right capacitances and the right charges, and you should get that all to work out. It's like one big puzzle. That was fun. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, you could give me a thumbs up or a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.